Our next participant's name is Isha Gönke from the International School of Luxembourg, who will be presenting her project called Optimizing UV Exposure to Inhibit E. coli Growth. In her project, Isha investigates the effect of UV light on E. coli growth by changing the time and intensity of light exposure on the bacterial cultures. Good afternoon. My name is Isha Goenka, and my project is optimizing UV exposure to inhibit E. coli growth. I would like to begin by asking you a question of whether you would drink the wa tap water in Luxembourg. Many of our answers would be yes, as we feel comfortable drinking the water as we believe it's been industrially treated and it's safe to drink. This, however, is not the case for many people around the world, over two billion of whom do not have access to safe drinking water. A study found that 59% of water samples taken from Bangladesh contained traces of pathogenic E. coli. E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria which secretes Shiga toxins, which may cause neurological complications and acute liver failure. As such, there are over 2,000 hospitalizations due to E. coli infec infections in the U.S. alone. As characteristic of gram-negative bacteria, the E. coli lipid membrane acts as a barrier to permeation of antibiotics, making it increasingly difficult to treat. While there are many water treatment solutions, ranging from chlorination, filtration, and using active carbon, each one with their own advantages and disadvantages, the one of special interest to me was using ultraviolet light. This led me to developing the research question of how does UV exposure, UV exposure time and light intensity affect the growth of E. coli measured by the number of counted colonies after 24 hours of incubation. UV light is divided into three categories, UVA, UVB, and UVC, each with its own wavelength range. UVA damages DNA via in indirect UV-induced damage, where octo ac reactive oxygen species are formed in a photodynamic reaction within cells, which can react with protein and lipid membranes within the bacterium, altering its permeability and eventually leading to apoptosis or cell death. It also generates adenine and guanine base modifications, changing the genetic code of the DNA strand and possibly leading to mutations or inactivation of the bacterium itself. Direct UV damage brought on by UVB and UVC causes DNA lesions formed by crosslinks between two adjacent bases of thymine and cytosine, covalently bonding these two bases, forming a dimer. If these dimers form on specific regions of the DNA strand, it can block the activity of DNA and RNA polymerases, thereby inactivating DNA replication and transcription. This eventually leads to cell death. I decided to use UVA in this investigation as it has the unique property of where bacteria are able to repair damaged DNA via photoreactivation. The first stage of this investigation was developing a methodology. Beginning with plating, for my preliminary trials, I concluded that spread plating was the best method of plating, and therefore I would need an inoculum in a liquid medium. So I inoculated LB broth using, using E. coli K12, which is a non-pathogenic lab-safe strain of E. coli. I, I incubated this for 24 hours at 30 degrees Celsius to allow the bacteria to grow and populate the broth. I then performed a serial dilution with the broth to obtain plates with easily countable numbers of colonies. This took a few trials to obtain the optimum dilution, which was 10 to the negative 6, as the images show too few and too many numbers of colonies on some plates. I then inoculated my agar plates with 0.5 centimeters cubed of the diluted inoculum. I altered two variables when exposing the E. coli plates to UV light. Firstly, exposure time, and secondly, light intensity by altering distance between the UV lamp and the bacterial plates, each with its own controlled trials. I constructed a large UV light box in which the bacteria would be exposed. 
After UV exposure, the plates were incubated in an incubator for 24 hours at 30 degrees Celsius before the colonies were counted. Perhaps the most important consideration of this investigation was carrying it out under the aseptic technique to minimize chances of contamination with other microorganisms within the E. coli plates. This consisted of sterilizing surfaces before and after use, using an autoclave to sterilize the broth, agar, and all glassware before use, using a Bunsen burner when inoculating to create an updraft in which airborne microorganisms are swept upwards and away from the work surface. However, despite these measures, some plates showed signs of contamination after incubation. However, these were not included within the data set. Now the results. I found that the number of counted colonies decreased as UV exposure time increased, as increased exposure time would, inc would raise the number of reactive oxygen species formed within the bacterium and therefore increase the likelihood of DNA damage. The number of colonies also decreased as light intensity increased, as increased luminosity means the light is more deeply penetratable to the bacterium and therefore increases the likelihood of forming reactive oxygen species or base modifications. There was no evidence of photoreactivation within this investigation due to the UV light as the number of colonies shows a linear regression. However, this could be attributed to the fact that it was a short exposure time. While the data has a strong negative and positive correlation, respectively, there are large standard deviations as shown by the error bars, which is a limitation of this investigation. This may be due to the small number of trials which may lead the data to not be statistically significant. However, the data can be corroborated by other literature studies which found a similar linear relationship between luminosity of UV light and photo damage to E. coli. There are many possible applications of this investigation, such as alternate methods of water treatment, a method of controlling the degree of bacterial disinfection, using UV and a possible method for damage to skin cells from exposure to tanning beds, for example, which also emit UVA. I've learned a lot from this project and I hope to continue to do such research that has a positive impact and capabilities of making a difference. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for your earlier talk and um, good to be here with you to ask a few more questions on your project. Um, what was the starting point for your studies? Um, I came across an article about the E. coli infestations in water in Bangladesh in specific and it, it really opened my eyes because I think living in Luxembourg we often take clean water for granted and we are not aware of the difficulties that other developing nations may be facing with their access to water. And so this made me think of possible ways to solve this problem. And with so much COVID-19 in the news and so many bacterial disinfection methods, I came across ultraviolet light as a form of bacterial disinfection. And so I decided to continue on this path as microbiology was also a new topic for me. I decided this would be the perfect opportunity to do something new and do some research which has some real life applications. Sounds interesting. Um, during your project, have you come across um, surprising things or have you faced any specific difficulties? I think developing the methodology in itself was the biggest difficulty I had. As I said before, microbiology is a new field for me, so when developing the methodology I had to do some research, and there are so many guidelines, articles, rules in research about how to go about doing this. So navigating that was a little overwhelming, but I thought that the best way to learn was by doing. So I conducted a lot of preliminary trials and to finally see what worked, what didn't, and 
finally, after six or seven trials, I developed a methodology that I was happy with. Impressive. <laughs> and looking further, um, now that you've participated two times, you said, mm -hmm. five years ago, yes. and now again, um, with your experience and impressions you, you could gain during that presentation and, 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 and studies, what would you tell um, young students, um, any advice for them to, to, to move ahead with the participation? I think when I participated five years back, it was a very basic project and I just wanted to participate, come together with like-minded people who were passionate about science like I was. And so I think the best advice I can give is just to take the plunge, even if it's something you don't think is worthy of being presented or if you think it's basic, chances are it is not. That you know your research better than anybody, that's why you think that way. And I think just having the opportunity in this forum to share your research, your innovations, and also learn from what other people are doing, it inspires you and also just stimulates creativity for what may come in the future. Sure. And, and this is quite some significant, find, uh, significant findings you've, you've, you've had now. Do you have any um, connection points to um, transmit your findings anywhere else than in this context of the competition? Uh, this is something that I submitted for my school assignment as well. Yeah. But other than that, I think this is the perfect place to share my ideas. There was such a wonderful jury made up of so many specialists who were able to guide me on what I could do in the future as well. So I think this, um, this is the perfect forum to share my findings with other students and all everyone who comes to the forum. Brilliant. And now talking about the future, what's next for you? Um, I hope to continue this investigation in some, in some regard, whether that be doing it so that I can have more concrete findings or changing some aspect of the investigation to find new material, new investigations, new research. But I think I want to continue down this path of looking at ultraviolet light. Very interesting. And also in future, do you already have plans for what you want to study later? Do you want to study in a science-related field? Yes, absolutely. I hope to study medicine in the future. And I think this is so closely tied with medicine where prevention is better than treatment. If we can find methods of preventing diseases in the first place, it makes our lives as doctors easier. So I think um, it's very closely tied to medicine and it's something that I think I can continue on in my higher university education as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much Thank for so taking much. the time. Congratulations. Uh, for your participation and the best of luck for tomorrow also Thank and um, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>